Yeah. Okay. Okay, so it's uh, five past seven. Um, uh, we're going to start this meeting of the Yellow Springs Planning Commission. Uh, would you like to call the roll, please? Sure. Reed? Here. Sims? Here. Stiles? Here. Ozell? Here. Abraham? Here. Also pleasant, present, our planner Denise Swinger and solicitor Jessica Brockman. Thank you. So we have an agenda, a uh, fairly long agenda. Any suggestions or changes or um, if not, I have one suggestion. Yes, Is well, I was going to suggest that our A and B under public hearings, that we simply skip over those since and not to do anything. Yeah, and, and so that's for the minor subdivision applications. If the planning commission does not take any action, then it happens without any further discussion. And so if everybody has, no one has an issue with that, I, I agree with that. Um, just let that uh, happen administratively, and these folks can, can go on. To council. So. They go to council, right? Nope. No. Nope. It goes nope. to administrative. It's, okay. It's done. Okay. Um, I have one other suggestion, and that is that we move the pocket neighborhood development forward ahead of the discussion on noxious weeds. <laughs> um, I think we're going to be we have a fairly long meeting here, and um, I think we want to kind of get to that. Um, I think okay. we have a month or two before, before we have to deal with weeds. I have the, the, the people here for the noxious weeds. Oh, you do? Here. Yes, the oh, presence. Okay. Oh, I thought you were joking. Sorry. Yeah, because well, I don't think it should be. Um, okay, so we need to hit cover it. Yeah, because they're, they're here. Yeah. All right, we'll see what it is then. Never mind. And just to clarify, did you want to make a motion to. Uh, it, it, for, my, for my benefit, it would be great to see a motion so that when we look back at the record, it's clear the Planning Commission moved. Not Susan, do you want to make a motion? <laughs> I can make a motion, but are we even supposed to make a motion if we are uh, just, just being silent on it? Consider the we're just not going to. Or hear the we're not taking any action. Is, is you, the you choose not to hear the right. presentation and not to take any action. That would, I mean, that would be the motion. Otherwise, Denise would present to you. Okay, I make a motion that our, under public hearings, our minor subdivision applications, A and B, that we take no action. And I guess that's it. We have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. All right. Okay. Um, Next on the item is nomination of chair. Can I have a and um, Could I get a pen? this was on our agenda last time, and we didn't do anything about it. Um, I gotta say, I've been doing this for a while. I'd rather not do it anymore. As I say, you're doing a great job. I would like to nominate you. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not have a second, okay? Let's let that die. I have to second that. I'm sorry, and I was um, sorry, not paying any attention whatsoever. Can I get the... Well, I nominated Matt as our chair. Jerry seconded. Okay. So... All in favor? Aye. 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 I'll abstain. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Matt. Yeah, th thank you. You'll get Susan. a really nice plaque. <laughs> thank you, Susan. Uh, the next item on the list is the uh, review of minutes from the 23rd of January. Um, hopefully, we all had a chance to review these. Does anyone have any comments on the first page? The second page? Third page? Fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh or eighth. If there's no comments or changes. Do we have kind of a motion to accept these as written? So move. A second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, I abstain. Adam abstains. Next item on the uh, agenda is communications. 
Uh, we have any communications? I don't believe we do, do we? It's not part of the packet. Uh, next item is council report. There are a couple of things happened at council. Uh, one, uh, we, we council did have a couple of executive sessions concerning the uh, uh, real estate. Uh, council did pass uh, two resolutions uh, as a result of that. Uh, one was to uh, use uh, to provide up to up to two hundred thousand for uh, possible easement. And uh, the second one, Judy, if I'm easement for what? Was easement on purchase of real estate. Conservation, 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 conservation easement. easement. Oh, okay. Okay. And then the second one was uh, to reaffirm that the village uh, would not extend uh, utilities outside of our mm -hmm. boundary. Why was that necessary? Isn't that in the charter? It is not. It is not uber, uber clear in the charter. And I think the affirmation was um, sought because of the possible uh, sale of the Arnovitz property and not knowing what anyone might want to undertake on that property and just to sort of make that abundantly make clear. clear on the part of council. Okay. And, of course, uh, uh, we did get the, the uh, final report on the uh, New Year's uh, Eve uh, ball drop incident, which is not fair plain. And I think that that was that was it in terms of major. Yeah. It was yeah. kind of a lot, actually. Yeah. You summarized yeah. it very concisely, but it was a lot that went on. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. The next item on the uh, agenda is citizens uh, comments this is where if you have comments on anything to address planning commission about that's not on the other on the agenda otherwise it's an opportunity to come forward and and say your piece uh, otherwise um, as we go through the individual items there'll be a, t a time there for you to as well to uh, to comment on specific items so if there's no citizen comments then we'll go into the public hearings uh, so we've dismissed the first two. So the, the third one is the uh, conditional use application for 319 Allen Street. So the way these, uh, these public hearings go is that we have a, uh, uh, we hear from staff, we have a discussion here, um, then we open the public hearing, allow folks, actually we also hear from the applicant, uh, and then we'll open the floor for comments from anyone who wants to uh, contribute to that discussion. Um, and then we'll close that public hearing and come back up here uh, for some rendering then um, uh, on the application. So to begin with, uh, Denise, do you want to start off sure. the discussion, please? Yeah. Uh, Eric Jurgens has applied for a, a conditional use hearing tonight to um, put an accessory dwelling unit on his property at 319 Allen Street. Uh, the proposed dwelling uh, is uh, 936 square feet, which is 136 square feet over the allowable requirement. So he did go to uh, the Board of Zoning Appeals and they approved a variance of 136 square feet, allowing this accessory structure and dwelling unit to be 936 square feet in size. So tonight what uh, Planning Commission needs to review is um, looking at the, um, the plan itself, um, making sure that it meets all the conditions in the conditional use for an accessory dwelling unit. And he is here along with his contractor. Okay. Do you um, uh, want to hear from them first uh, and then come back to you or? Uh, do, do you want to say anything about the mm -hmm. oh, Sure. Hello, I'm Eric Jurgens, and um, that, that is me that's applied for this. Um, really, <clears throat> I guess, I don't know. What I, I guess I'm more than happy to entertain any questions you have. I, I don't know the um, application that dwelling itself kind of speaks for itself, but um, we're looking to um, basically build a garage um, 
and then an apartment over the top of it for we have out of town family. Um, children are grown and come back occasionally, that kind of thing. Um, college of the son gets to stay over the summer. Um, and you know, just based on uh, uh, the garage is there now, it's not really going to fit our needs. So this is where we ended up where we are now. So, um, I can tell you that um, this is not my um, first property in Yellow Springs, actually, my third one. I've tried to leave each one a little bit better than what I found it. And I think I've, in a humble manner, been successful with that. And um, so, um, anyway, um, um, I, I promise you a quality structure. Um, we take care of the property. And um, uh, I think, again, in the previous history kind of speaks for itself. So, appreciate your help. Okay, thanks. So you're uh, any questions for yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure. You're planning them your so the picture that we received, that's the current garage? That's correct. And you're planning on then taking that down. Yeah. Um, okay. We would. And um, basically the footprint is similar, no, not exactly where that garage is located, it's a little larger and a little higher. Um, but in that same general area. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Um the structure itself is um, Somewhat similar, but a little larger than the um, um, garage I built uh, at 1108 Xenia um, Avenue. Um, it's very similar to that. Um, small tweaks, but similar to that. And when it's something to look at, that give you a rough idea. Okay, thank you. Sure. And then, how far off the property line are you going to be? You think? Um, uh, whatever. I don't know. Yeah. What's the minute on yours? Yeah. Feet. I mean, we we address the setback lines like we're we're. We're where we need to be, and even a little bit further. So, hmm. yeah, how much was it, please? It says um, it the rear setback. Uh, oh, there it is. For an accessory structure, is 20. 10 feet, but this structure will be set back 20 feet. Mm -hmm. um, my question is, um, if I can ask this, um, why was the BZA? Why did they approve the um, um, addition? Well, Square footage? Um, actually, we we asked for that. I think, quite honestly, um, uh, I've got the the total property itself is two and a quarter acres, and so it's a, a pretty large piece. Mm -hmm. And um, I I don't I can't necessarily address their mindset, but um, I I think that you know if if I was going to guess, I mean. I don't want to call it a hardship, but the property itself needs maintenance and that kind of thing. I like to take care of, I mean, you're in an extra room for, say, lawn or gardening or, you know, I like cars too, so I mean, in a room for three cars, but uh, some other things too that, uh, that personally I, I would like to have not stored in the house to take care of the property. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is, um, is the square footage, is the footprint print larger than what's the garage that's there now? Um, I really measured it, to be honest with you. It's, uh, I, I suppose it is a little bit mm -hmm. larger. So but not by a lot? I don't think so. So I imagine that structure that's there is, well, there's room for two cars. It's not as deep. That was one of the problems, too. It's only about 16 or 17 feet deep, which is really, when you, you can get a compact car in there, but you can't, you can't really, you couldn't get like a pickup truck or anything. This garage not deep enough what's there right now and the, it, it's where it's semi a story and a half the, the upstairs would be just for storage is probably six or eight feet that's not, it's not tall enough for, for actually yeah. Room, so, yeah any other questions for him while he's here on his feet okay awesome. thanks you bet um, one of the <clears throat> things that I realized after um, he had turned in his application, that property is, um, sir, is using a well for water. Um, our zoning code um, states public water and sanitary is required for all property in these districts. However, um, in conferring with uh, legal and with um, the water superintendent, he felt that um, rather than telling them that they can't use the well, which they've been using for a long time, that one of the conditions be that have a water meter installed near the well, so at least we will be able to calculate the sewer. Um, as you're going to, you know, that that property is going to not be separately metered, 
that accessory dwelling unit will have to tie in with the existing water and sewer. But um, since they have their own water, uh, right now, the way it is, uh, there, because there is no meter there, any any water that is used from the well goes into the sewer system. Oh, it does. Okay. And it's not calculated. No, so they're not. So they're basically only paying a readiness for service oh. fee. Yeah. You had a nice deal there. What's that? You had a nice deal there. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I, I am, uh, um, well, actually, to be honest with you, I've only had the nice deal since last August. Right. Um, and the people before me had a great deal. Um, however, I, I do pay. I do not know how that is calculated. I do pay something for sewer. Um, I do not know what that is. Right. But I do it's pay. a readiness for service fee. It's okay. what you pay, which okay. um, because your sewer is calculated off your water meter, mm -hmm. and because you don't have a water meter, they 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 they're not able to estimate what your use is. Okay. Um, so it would just be a simple water meter that would be put at at that location to calculate the sewer only. You wouldn't be charged for the water. Okay. I, 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 that's totally fine with me. I, I'm not looking to take advantage of anybody. I'm, I'm happy to pay for whatever it is I use. I, I, that's my obligation. That's, that's what the, um, and, and, and the village didn't want to say you can't use the well. So, okay, so <laughs> yeah. this was sort of the, kind of the meeting that. halfway there. And, and, and quite frankly, at the end of the day, we probably will tap the water anyway. I, I, I mean, well, well that's really not you, preferable water. Yeah. Okay, so well, if, if at that point you do, you can talk to the um, water superintendent because the the water line is out of the road. You know, you're pretty far away from that, so you. Have uh, to I think we did a little investigating on that. I think it's 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 there. Yeah, it was taken off of the city water and mm -hmm. put into the well at some point. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Okay. It's right there beside it. Well, I mean, obviously that would be even better, yeah. pre more preferable. Be easier for you guys. And again, I, I, I mean, I guess my point would be twofold. Number one is probably eventually, sure, when, when we're all finished here, we'll, we'll, we'll be using the village water. Okay. And we have to pay for it. And, and whatever is fair, I'm totally good with that. So, okay. um, so right. yes, if you need to install a water meter, by all means, hook it up. Okay. Great. Okay, if there's any, no other questions, uh, no. anyone have any questions well, for Denise? Yeah, um, on the final thoughts, where the owner of a home on uh, Kerr Street was talking about uh, that they have a wall of windows and they were concerned mm -hmm. about, about the lighting. Okay. I was, yeah. I was a little bit confused. I could say yeah, so we'll get that out of the public. Yeah, we'll have community comments. Tim, Tim Conrad, I'm okay. Eric's building. I was out there this morning just looking at things, and the building that they're talking about already is entirely east of where the existing garage is, and so it's not a direct line of sight up into the current building and our proposal is even moving it a little bit further west by a few feet. So it's not a direct line of sight, but just to let you know where things actually are. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and they do have a, um, they're actually moving the structure a little bit forward than the existing. So they're going to have a 20 foot setback even though accessory dwelling units only require 10 mm -hmm. and side yards being five for an accessory um, dwelling or and structure they're going to be 32 feet from the side yard so you do have plenty of room if you do want to go a little bit that way okay any more questions for denise mm -hmm. any discussion here amongst us if not we'll open the public hearing Okay, so we'll open the public hearing. Anyone who has anything they want to address with respect to this topic, um, come to the podium and, uh, and say your piece. And um, if not, we'll uh, um, close the public hearing. <laughs> Any further discussion here? But I know the... Um, um, the BZA and their discussion, it sounds like, dealing with the uh, question of, of sight lines and all that. I mean, it's always a 
tension that we have, right, with setbacks and, you know, solar rights and everything else and screening and um, I know it's, 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 uh, it, it's hard to make everybody happy. Um, so I, the extra setback, I think that's a, that's definitely helpful. Yeah. Uh, any more questions for Denise? Any discussion here? Um, if not, do we want to consider a motion? Well, I move that um, we approve this with the condition or the requirement that they install a water meter to calculate the sewer use. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? And can you maybe just clarify that the water meter is installed to the to both facility the, both the units, water meter both? will be installed on the well. Okay. Yeah, to calculate the, well. the sewer use for both awesome. structures. For both structures, yeah. You have what you need? Oh, I have what I am. Sorry. Yes, I have what I need. Unless okay. you want to add that final approval will be given by the village or some such thing. You've got that in the recommendations, but that's. Yeah, because he's, he's interested in maybe actually hooking up to the village water. So like yeah, well, sure. Yeah. Okay. Maybe that uh, the work of village staff on installation of a water meter. Yeah. Okay. Can you repeat what you just said? She'll repeat the whole thing when she's done, right? It, she's so. wanting that the yeah, that sure so. the applicant uh, contact the water superintendent for the location and installation of the water meter. Okay, so what I've got, and this may be a little rocky here, so so you're moving to approve. <clears throat> um, with under the condition that the applicant work with village staff uh, on the installation of a water meter um, to monitor uh, well water usage. No, well, yeah, <coughs> as it relates to the sewer. Well, well water sewer. usage or tap into public water, the sewer. Okay. Just to monitor water usage of both structures. You should say both structures. For both structures. To calculate the sewer use. Okay. So sewer use. And I would assume that your condition just goes away if he decides to tap in because at that point he's right. just following the right. Right. regulation. So we don't need to state that correct right so do you want to do you want that clumsy thing yeah. on yes. again? Okay. one more time yeah what are we voting on <laughs> so the condition that the applicant work with village staff for installation of a water meter um, to monitor water usage for both structures for the calculation of sewer use may not yeah that's a little extra information there but it is yeah. for the sewer. Yeah. That's, that's, good. that's good that's good that's okay. perfect that's good. so you want to call the roll did we get a second on that? Yep, yeah. I did. Jerry does Sims, okay. Styles. Reed? Yes. Sims? Yes. Styles? Yes. Hosell? Yes. Abraham? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Could I ask a question? Okay. Sure. Will, will we need to accomplish that before we can proceed with the county and building team? No. No. No, you can go ahead with the county. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you that because it'll be a condition on the in the letter that I give you, okay. along yeah, with the permit. Yeah, I mean, will we need to come back here again once we get that meter installed, or work? No, you're working with the you work staff. With, yeah, you work with our staff, but you're gonna um, you can proceed with Green County Building Regulations once I give you that zoning permit. Sure. Okay. Make it happen. 
Okay. Item D on the agenda is the noxious weed uh, <coughs> removal of plants and weeds by owner amendment to chapter 67402. Um, these folks came to us three months ago. Is that what it's been? Oh, it's, yeah. It's like the, yeah with October. kind of a wide ranging discussion. And so, Denise, you can craft us some language for the. Uh, no, they did. Okay. They crafted the language. Okay. <laughs> um, the Environmental Commission came up with the language. Um, when we met in October, um, they, we had talked about the July 1 enforcement date regarding mowing was problematic, making people wait that long. People would call in and say that their, the weeds are really getting bad in, in, a, in lawns that need to be mowed, and there wasn't anything we could do from a staff point of view because of that July 1. Um, so the recommendation, one of the recommendations was to strike that language, but they also wanted to add um, a, a lot more language educationally as well um, for, to let people know what is considered noxious, and I think they can present this much better than me. Okay. And so ultimately what our goal here is tonight is this is a modification of the um, Revised existing, the existing yeah, code. Yeah, and it's not in the zoning code at all. It's This is something that is uh, Environmental Commission presented to Council. The Council asked Planning Commission to review it. So we're just and reviewing then, it. And, and we're making a rec recommendation. Making back, recommendation. Back to Council. Mm -hmm. Okay, do you want to uh, start with your uh, what, what, what you've added? and? Um, so actually we haven't added anything. Okay. Um, from our last discussion. I would like to clarify, uh, the Environmental Commission actually has part of its charter um, to advise the Village Council mm -hmm. on revisions to ordinances relative to environmental, I can read the language, but I won't, um, environmental issues. And that's really um, where the bulk of the changes to this ordinance come from. Um, the uh, the changing to allow for managed natural landscapes um, to promote pollinator species and rain gardens, which actually is in another part, another ordinance as well, um, but also to expand uh, the language to align with the ODNR on noxious and invasive species so that people, regardless of whether or not they mow their properties, whether it's a forested area or whatever it is, wooded area, um, that they're, that it's recommended that they review, remove invasive and noxious species. Um, but relative to the mow date, we recommended uh, that from an environmental perspective, that the, um, a no mow date really doesn't make a lot of sense. If we're going to have grass and mow it, then from an environmental perspective, um, it, it doesn't make a lot of sense to have one date or another. It would be completely arbitrary from our, from our perspective. Um, but the last ask, well, what, last time I was here, the ask, and actually Nadia Malaki was also here, was to review um, the ordinance relative to um, uh, requiring people to mow versus not requiring them to mow. Because as the ordinance is currently written, it only requires people to mow a buffer area around their property. It doesn't require them uh, to mow their entire property. There's no actual requirement for that as currently written. Uh, from, a, from a purely environmental perspective, as long as people are removing the not, noxious species. It does, which it does require. Which it does require. Already. Right, yeah. which it does require. So from a purely environmental perspective, if people don't have noxious species or invasive species on their plants it, uh, or on their property, there's really no environmental reason why they should mow it. As a matter of fact, there are probably a lot of reasons why they shouldn't. Um, so we're, uh, I could go into those, but I won't unless you would like me to. So we're not recommending any changes from our original uh, changes, which included um, four areas, and I'll sum uh, summarize those. Um, the addition of purple loose strife to the noxious weeds and um, adding a clause to recommend a removal of 
the worst invasive plants as divided by the ODNR, uh, the removal of the no mow date section um, that would apply to the buffer zones, and um, a clause um, encouraging or allowing for managed natural landscapes. And so this is your language on the uh, managed natural landscapes? Yeah, this landscapes? is the language that went to the Environmental Commission, and it was voted on and passed yeah. there. Okay. Okay. Uh, any questions? So, <clears throat> on, uh, on the comments <clears throat> where we where it talks about uh, <clears throat> the question was asked how how will the village then deal with persons who let their lawns grow without maintenance? And then after that, there's a statement that says that anyone with a lawn has to maintain it to a height of no uh, of, of lower than 12 inches. So. This is part of Denise's uh, yes. part yeah, of but it's in, discussion. It's in number three. Yeah. Right. So, he, but what he's saying is that will remain the same. Yeah. Um, the only thing that they're, that they're requesting that um, the village strike is is number five. What will be number five B? So they've kept. Okay, I didn't. Say, we didn't have. Yep, kept the twelve okay. inches here. Okay. 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 Added loose yeah. strife. Okay. I'm, I'm yeah. fine. Yeah. They're just adding okay. a lot yeah, of information. You didn't see that. Yeah. We just yeah. got. Yeah. Yeah. I, okay. Okay. Um. So. Uh. Maybe this is just maybe this is clear um but the distinction between managed natural landscaping of native plant communities grown through their natural annual cycle is encouraged and the cutting back of uncultivated non-woody plant growth right which is in number three so the original language is you have to mow uncultivated non-woody plant growth within five feet of the interior blah 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 what what makes manage natural landscaping of native plant communities different than uncultivated non-woody plant growth i think in terms of the setbacks if you will or the buffer zone i don't think anything does okay so within that mowing area even if you have a managed natural landscape there so there's no changes to m the mowing Buffers regulation at all right. okay Oh, okay. This is just we're encouraging you to. Is it, There's a I, lot of other communities in the United States, including Cincinnati, a number of other in the state of Ohio, who have this type of uh, language in their um, in their law ordinance, if you will. And we're looking to add that. For what what purpose does it provide? What's what's the purpose? So the the value of the ordinance is that it promotes natural communities and the benefits from an environmental perspective it promotes natural communities and um, the benefits that come along with them similar to how how does how does it promote anything i, I don't yeah, understand one, how it doesn't if, if, if you have them, and legitimization is a big part of um of promoting right okay. and it, it's there's a similar uh, ordinance and I should, should have uh, memorized the number but promoting um, uh, rain gardens mm -hmm. right and, and allowing rain gardens but there's no reason why one couldn't put in a rain garden if you didn't prevent them from putting okay, in okay so it's like can I do this and you look it up right. and you see that it's there because most people think yeah. that they have to there are many communities that require you to mow your grass so height of two and a half to three inches <laughs> and yeah. that's literally all that you can do yeah, and, and so a lot of people think that um, that is kind of universally applicable. So by having this kind of language, it makes it clear to people that um, you can, if you choose, uh, have a managed natural landscape or a rain garden, 
Okay. We're not allowing anything we didn't allow before, and we're not not allowing any uh, except for the dates. I right? think the big thing too is, is is under the old code without this, if you had trees that you planted in your yard, someone could say, well, that's you're letting your yard go. You need to mow that, and so this makes it clear that if you're trying to promote a natural area, well, it's, we, it's, if they were in the five foot buffer zone, you still what, would. What does be other uncultivated woody species mean? Yeah. That, that's a that's what I that's my real question. Right, right. And so by being explicit about what you will allow um, and what is allowed, it makes it clear to people if I want to plant um, a meadow or natural grasses and take care of them mm -hmm. and make sure that there aren't invasive species and other things in them, that that is. Yeah, I I just you know like to know why we are putting in things and taking out things. Okay, I'm, I'm, thank Actually, you. there is some verbiage in there um, uh, around the last sentence around the benefits under section four. Um, it also uh, is in line with our village's commitment to um, uh, pursue right. all ways possible for lowering our carbon footprint. So yeah. it's consistent with that as well. Okay, thanks. Any more questions? Okay, uh, so this is again a public hearing. So um, I'll open the public hearing. If anyone has any comments regarding this uh, text change recommendation to council regarding the removal of plants and weeds, this is your opportunity. If no one would like to speak on this sub subject, uh, then we'll close the public hearing. Any further discussion? If not, would someone like to make a recommendation as to how we act on this uh, with council? So it would be, yeah, it would be a motion that we... Well, I, I move that uh, we accept the staff's recommendation for approval of the proposed tax amendment to forward on to council to find this that it, it is in compliance with section 1280-02 parentheses A of the zoning code. Well, are we approving it or are we recommending it? Is it the We're approving thing? its rec. I'm, I'm approving the staff's recommendation. Which we send it to council. And we send it to council. Okay, but it's they not necessary to. for us to approve it. It's necessary for us to recommend it. We have to approve the recommendation. Okay. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So we have a second? That's fine. I second it. Do you like to call the roll, please? Abraham. Aye. Pozo? Aye. Scott? Yes. Sims? Yes. Reed? Yes. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you for all of your. <laughs> okay. Next item on our agenda is the text amendments regarding short-term rentals. Rentals. Uh, Denise, you want to start us yeah, off, please? I mean, at the last meeting, we, we were pretty, uh, <coughs> we went really kind of hashed everything out, but there was uh, a change to the definition again, and that had, that had already been approved like in November, so it had not been publicly uh, uh, published in the newspaper, publicly noticed. So that's why, thank you. That's why we had to go, we had to come back again. So um, we, I think the language pretty much, this just, uh, the, the definition changed after what we had approved um, before for it was one person on a, it, we had daily, weekly, or monthly basis, but typically less than one year, we now said for fewer than 30 days. So a dwelling unit or a room in a dwelling unit, which we're adding that is rent, rented or leased to one person, family, or entity for fewer than 30 days. And so that was what we decided to do. And then we had already reviewed, but if you want to review it again, um, the other information regarding um, 
the short-term rentals, I did um, take uh, language from the accessory dwelling unit to plug in there and that this is a lot more detail than what was in there before. So how much of this, Denise, have we not seen up to, up to this point? Didn't we approve some of these specific requirements? Well, at the last meeting, we, we reviewed some of these specific requirements. I don't know if we actually voted on them. I, I don't think we voted on them. We just had a discussion about the right. language. Yes. We, we okay. changed the for fewer than 30 days, so we, had, we didn't vote on anything. Oh, that's right. Okay. Because we hadn't, I hadn't noticed we that. Didn't, we didn't notice that. Uh, yeah, because yes, you yes. already approved the definition, and then you decided to modify the definition. Okay, it's all coming back to me. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> I do have a question. Once this is passed, mm -hmm. how do you deal with the already operating Airbnbs? Are you going to con contact them, and or what do you do? Well, we had talked about this before. I, if you know, if if I can, um, if I if I can, what I would do is ask that they just come back through for a hearing here and. Um, I'd waive the fee since they're already, they're already grandfathered in prior to that. But just um, for a review, I think conditional use hearings are, you know, you're, sometimes you have to come back anyway um, after a certain period of time and revisit. But, you know, I'll explain to people that it's really just so that we, you know, have a contact, emergency contact for the police department and that kind of thing. Yep. So, a list of them too. right a list. Yeah. is that something that could be done administratively without coming to mm -hmm. um well the only thing is and i think what susan might be getting at is that because these are a conditional use and they didn't come before the planning commission for a conditional use hearing per se um they've they've been a conditional use since the zoning code went into existence in 2013. so i mean if they're if they are new between the new code being adopted and now yeah otherwise they'd be grandfathered they'd in. be really grandfathered in i mean they're kind of because we our language wasn't very good you know it was hard to and you've said you've been contacted by some i've been contacted by people that have been interested in mm -hmm. having an airbnb and i've let them know that this language is there and and it's always been there it just is getting some clarification to the definition of it. So um, I'll look into that. I'll look at it as a, a whether I'll, I mean, see how, I'll see how many and if it can be an administrative. And what do you folks think? Do you think, do you want to have a hearing for every Airbnb in town? I mean, I think if we go about just approving everyone that if we have the hearings and we approve everyone who comes forward, we're going to have a lot of angry neighbors, right? Like who have already been living with the with a unregistered. I would assume Airbnb. they wouldn't necessarily be angry neighbors if unless they've already complained to Denise. Yeah. Have you had many complaints? Uh, one that it was an anonymous complaint so, so given the ch chance to complain i don't know what i mean how do you want to give the folks the forum to complain i guess <laughs> uh, that's the that's the question uh, do we have to well, do we okay, have well, to I mean, we don't necessarily have to but in some ways in some that's part of our function is to give people a, a forum to speak what's on their mind. I mean, if, so. they, if it was already required that they have a conditional use before this change, it seems like, yeah, they should have a, a conditional use hearing. Good day in court, you know. What, what do you think? I mean, yeah, I, I, I guess, I guess if, uh, given the circumstances that, you know, it already was in the code for short-term rentals and this qualifies, then yeah. And we've actually made it less restrictive, right? because of the it's it's not it's not for like month to month anymore it's really literally for just the people who are running for less than 30 days and you would think that there would be some requirement if you were running out something for less than 30 days well i mean we don't monitor people that 
buy a property and they rent it to people in yeah. a year to year lease or what have that, that's exactly. not what this is yeah. about. Yeah. Um, but this is this about, is sort of almost like a, it's like a little hotel. Business. Yeah, this is about oh, is. this yeah. is about short term visitors to a neighborhood that don't have connection to the community and it, right. you know there's safety concerns and um, accountability concerns right. when yeah. when you're talking about who's managing a property, you know what the details <laughs> of that are, and just so the village has information if. You know, if something happens, it seems like that's... Well, we'll still have that information if they have to come to Denise as yes. an administrative action. That's but, yeah, moving forward, any, they're, they're, they're going to have to yeah. come before Planning Commission. But do we want them to come before Planning Commission? In but addition the, but to the that... But the people from um, the, the past... I mean, I think it's quite possible that there's people who have neighbors who are running an Airbnb that they might have complaints about, but they might not realize it's an Airbnb or what's going on there. I mean, giving the people the chance to be like, you know, this is what's going on in your neighborhood exactly. Yeah. Do you want this to happen? I think that's fair if we're going to be doing it to people going forward and if it's already been written in. So it sounds like going forward, we should, we want them to have a hearing. Mm -hmm. Probably so, since it's, yeah. It's extra well, work, going though. forward, but also but it does retroactively. Get neighborhood. Yeah. And then retroactively, do we want them to come in? I mean, I think I think so. Yeah, I mean, that's 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 the case. I mean, that's the case I was making. Yeah. It would certainly give us a better idea of what's going on. Right. <laughs> I mean, it's not going to it's not going to be a question of being able to then tell them, okay, now you can't do this yeah. anymore. Yeah. Yeah. We won't be able to tell no. them, no, you can't no. do this anymore. Okay. Oh, yeah. I don't think you can force them to come in either, though. Right. I mean, oh. if they're not going to come in, right. Maybe well, they'll give you the information still, though, which would be good. Which, which makes us now come in full circle around to what Matt's saying. Should I just try to get all the information I need from an administrator? Oh, if they don't have to come in anyway. But, would we, but if they don't have to come in, would we have to notify their neighbors? I mean, and we wouldn't have to put up a sign. That's the question, right? Putting up a sign and notifying their neighbors. It's not about whether or not they get their day in court. It's about whether or not the people in the neighborhood get to express their feelings to us right. on the record. I get, uh, yeah, go ahead. I had sort of a devil's advocate yeah. question about the fact that you can't force anyone to come in and comply with the administrative request, and that is that your purpose in, key, in gaining that list is so that when you do get someone who's compliant and comes in and says I'd like to have an Airbnb in this neighborhood Denise can pull out that list and say well there are three of them right. and so as we conduct yeah. our hearing we're going to take note that there are three of them however if you can't make anyone come in and say I've already got an existing Airbnb I mean that just seems to be a disadvantage to the village side of things. I, I don't know that it changes it if you require that they actually have a hearing, except that then you have neighbors going, yeah, well, how come the guy on the other side didn't have to come in? He's got one, too. Right. I mean, that's the only, that can of worms is going to open up on you. I don't know how you well, it, handle it. Well, it's the same question, though, is this, you can't say you can have X number per block. It's right. just that something that we, we can't say that in the... I don't think even in the ordinance, right? Wait, so are you saying that... I thought you could limit them I, I think, as an overall... I think we heard from these folks that we can only limit it through a hearing, through administratively, people saying enough's enough. Yeah. It's, and it might be different from one neighborhood to another. But you can't say, and stuff they can't say there's 10 per square mile. Yeah, or. Okay. Wait, so are you saying that if we have a here if we require people who already are doing this to if they read like if we say you're doing this like we have evidence that you're doing this they will only give us the information if we don't make them come in because they have to give us the information about what they're doing i mean they have to apply for conditional use or else they're not they can't do it legally well, they already are doing it. And but now they would this have, is new. But they would be. What is, what is what's what's so what's the t penalty? So they've been. So they've never had to. 
they, they've been able to operate without a conditional use. Pretty much, yes. And it's because not been a requirement. It has not well, been a requirement. Even though the use has changed. Even though we have short-term rentals in the code, <clears throat> most are not the, the definition that we had. There was, there wasn't, it wasn't, it didn't fit. It didn't fit. The yeah. definition, it didn't fit. So it's a loophole. So you can't go back and regulate people after they've already been doing it. So the best we could hope for is to have them register. To so those so people, we would want them just to register them, I guess. I mean, you can't <coughs> tell them no. they may want, they may want to come in. And but they have to, so you, you can't tell them not to do it, so there's no way to make them give you information because there's no way to charge them with why, not. Why would anyone give you information? Down? I'm just curious. Yeah. Well, in it's case there's an emergency and they were, you know, and if they're, we, the village needs to know who's managing it in case there's an emergency. Right. If something happens, somebody gets hurt. Oh, yeah, sir. Medical sir. emergency, whatever. Okay, so I, I mean, you can see all of them. I've looked a few yeah. times. I mean, you can see every, how, how many? their pictures are there. Yeah. yeah. I think there's at least, I don't know. It's, I mean, it's, 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 it's not clear, it's not clear because, because yeah. there's quite a few. There are quite a few. Yellow Springs, quite a few. as much as he yeah. is. The area they like, do is more, more than you think. It's not a corporate limit yeah. when they say uh, Yellow Springs. Or something but like there's, that. I mean, it seems like there's quite a few. Yeah. I, I uh, would argue for an administrative uh, way. Going forward or well, for the? Just for, for, just for, for the existing. Yeah. From the people who are grandfathered in who we can't tell them to stop anyway. For them to. So, so now wait a minute. To get conditional. What, what if they, because we have requirements now that, like, that it's a, a family. You know, if it's a one unit, that it would be a family or, you know, a one group. No more than two adults. Yes. So what if right now they're housing more than that? Can they be stopped from doing that? No. No. What if I started doing an Airbnb? I mean, like, sorry, go I mean, going forward now, everybody has to obviously come in and like sit and go with personal use. But what if I wanted to start one tomorrow and just told you I've been doing it this whole time? But what, I mean, what? I don't know. It, it's it going to be difficult. It just seems like it's a very like just nebulous situation. But isn't well, that how all of our new regulations are? I mean, really? I mean, we're, <laughs> I mean, we're a complaint-driven. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's how. So it's just easier to get an avenue for our complaints. That, I mean, if so, if neighbors say, "What the heck's going on?" Now you know. So that must all be operating okay. Well, except for one, at least. That's how one. <laughs> it was anonymous. So it sounds like we should we agree they should have a come forward for a hearing from as you soon as this is adopted. Well, that's what it says. Right? And then, but between the folks prior to this day or the final adoption of this, we just want them administratively, administratively to give Denise the information that she needs. Will they be? Will they have a conditional use granted to them administratively? Let me ask this question. Because let me, I'll get back to that. If, if, if we did a public notice that basically said anyone who is operating and under these conditions would, needs to come forward, um, is there any way that, because if not, then after this date, any that are discovered or considered to be new? <laughs> I don't think. I'd have I to mean, look, yeah, I you know what I'm trying to get at? Yeah. So kind of, otherwise, it's like almost like sending out a they, mass they, letter. But they have receipts from, I mean, if they were, if they were old, they have receipts from, I mean, like, I mean, if they wanted to drag it out, they have receipts that they've been they operating for a certain amount of time. They, they can prove that, that they've been doing it right, right. not new, too. Yeah, because like, I mean, the difficulty here is people like running out of room. Right. Um, you may never know that someone's just running out of room. I'm more, I'm more worried about like the long term. You know, what if like everyone's doing this? It's no, I don't think it's the long term, like you said, the long term is people have an investment in the neighborhood right. for a longer long term. It's the weekenders. And you don't know. I just, uh, you don't know. And if the police don't don't know who the emergency contact would be for the owner of the house or someone who manages the property yeah. to know uh, what's going on. Well, that should be on the auditor's website, right? 
Well, but see, you know, it, the person who it, does it, it, the owner yeah. could live yeah. in California. It's yeah. like best and they point. have somebody locally managing yeah. it for them. Yeah, yeah I, I've done some yeah. maintenance stuff for Airbnb in town. It, it sort of sounds like you're. The difficulty is realizing. Well, no one's actually going to. Most folks aren't going to voluntarily come forth and do what it is that we'd like them to do. And, and in a way, the question would be, well, where's the disadvantage? If you have a conditional use hearing for someone who is starting up an, a new operation, comes in, <coughs> legitimately does it, neighbors may come and say, well, there are already two or three of those. We don't want another one. Right. And that may be to that individual's disadvantage, but that's nothing the village can control. Right. But from the village's side, if the village does due diligence, puts out a public notice, asks folks to come forward and be recognized administratively. <coughs> if there is a disaster, the village says, we ask everyone right. to do this. Yeah. And they chose not to come in, and there's nothing we have. We have no control over that. Right, that makes so sense. So in a way, although it's a bummer, I think you're in a win-win if you publicly notice and just ask that folks come forward. Right. Yeah. So basically, so that we can have a registry. Correct. Of who yes. they are. We're not asking them to come before the planning commission to possibly be denied or anything like that. We're just saying we just need a register to, you know, to have a register. We can work on that. Mm -hmm. kind of Do we up. have an application uh, form for conditional use of short-term rentals specifically, or is it just? So just the same as we do, anything but it's, else. It's got to be changed because. Do we have to else. change that, or you can do that administratively? I, I should be able to do that based okay. on what you're approving here. I'm okay. just adding that into the language. Yes. Okay. Cool. Okay. Okay. So it sounds like we kind of have a plan there, but the the question back before us then is still is these text amendments. So if we're okay with how mm -hmm. we think we want Denise to handle this. I I've moved that we approve these. But we still have to have a public hearing. Oh. So that's where we're. So we're back to that to topic, though. Yeah. Okay. The text changes. Okay. So I'll open the public hearing. Do you have any comments on this topic that you would like to address? Okay. Anyone else? Uh, if not, <laughs> I'll close the public hearing. And uh, and then do we have any further discussion about these text changes? Okay, Rose. Now you can make your motion. I move to approve these text amendments of. Regarding short term rentals. Seven. Judy, would you like to call the roll, please? Yes. Pilzell? Yes. Styles? Yes. Abraham? Yes. Sims? Yes. Reed? Yes. <coughs> okay. We're flying right through this. Okay, so the next topic. is the uh, text amendments regarding pocket neighborhood developments. And so there's a series of um, um, items here. Um, we, we've kind of gone through before. Yes. Um, let, me, let me start here by asking Judy a question. Yeah. Do we need a public hearing on each of these amendments? Can we consider these in mass? I think that you can. I mean, they are. They all relate to one. They all relate to one thing. They're, you couldn't pull any one of those things out and have it stand alone and make a lot of sense. So, you no, know, I think you can have the conversation and then okay. move. But in the motion, I would include every single yep. item because when it goes before council, doesn't it have to? Don't you have, don't you have to do ordinance for each section of the text? Each um, separate. We will. Yeah. Well, in order to do so, do you need separate motions from Planning Commission on each section since they're not? They're just rec we're just a recommendations. Yeah, I mean, I, don't, I think it's okay to have one big one, but for council, yeah, it'll have to be all separate because they're in all different sections. So. Yeah. I came to get a definition of what a pocket neighborhood is. I want to be educated. <laughs> okay. And all these. That's what my well, okay, so where is our definition? It's on here somewhere. In fact, it's back, I think, in the back with definition.
Yeah, so do you have the full packet? Is there, um, there are packets out on the table? Out on the table? I don't actually see a definition. <coughs> we'll have part it's, of neighborhood development. It's, oh, it's there. That's okay, the last great. page at the bottom. So was this all in the paper? No. Yes, I mean only the you only the the uh, the heading the section number, but yes, those were all in the each single each and every one of those was in the paper. Oh, and there's dwelling pocket neighborhood development. I noticed all of them. So. Hmm. Yeah, not the final final. They are very. It is very similar to cluster. Yeah. It's it's very similar in that you have a shared common space, um, and you also essentially have a homeowners association that kind of manages that common space. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, and that's. Yep. Yeah. Yes. And it varies depending upon which residential district you're in. Maybe we just don't even start that and just say, see if I can put it in there. I don't know if I see if I can find that definition. And I could do that too. And I think that's a very, very good definition of it. Uh, no, mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. Just I, mean, I agree. Very nice. Yeah. <coughs> it's concise. And mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so well, did we want to just go over this, the um, 1262.08 first then? Because everything else kind of falls in line with what? The 1262.08? Uh -huh. Yeah, I agree. That's what I, yeah. that's what I think. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to go through this, and it's probably what? some of your questions are, uh, will probably be answered. Um, okay, so this is a public hearing on uh, Chapter 1262.08. Section 08 E Residential 6 Pocket Neighborhood Developments. Uh, do you want to lead us through this? Sure. Okay. So um, the underlying sections of this, we'll just take it through. These were th these were um, have been discussed over the past few months as to what we want. Mm -hmm. um, we agreed that it could be considered in only the three residential districts A, B, C. Um, we had discussed that in residential A, following what is the requirement in our current zoning code, the density shall be a maximum of six units per acre, in B, eight units, in C, 14 units. The minimum lot area for a PND is equal to the minimum lot requirements for the corresponding residential district, um, which is, you know, in the case of A, is 7,500 square feet, but you wouldn't be able to put much on there. So <clears throat> to further clarify this, we said on a lot to be used for a PND, the lot size maximum must be under five acres. Once you hit five acres or more, it goes into a PUD. On a lot to be used for a PND, a minimum of four detached single family dwelling units around a common open space area are required. This will resolve any issues with someone who maybe wants to build a second home on their property um, where there's sure. a lot of space. Or multiple accessory structures um, for housing. Yeah. And call it this instead. Yes. On a lot to be used for a P&D, an existing detached single family residential or duplex structure, which may be non-conforming with respect to the standards of the section, shall be permitted to remain but the extent of the nonconformity may not be increased, and the existing structure will factor into the maximum lot coverage permitted for that residential zoning district. So if someone wanted to take an existing single family uh, residential, and they can do that. Um, if it is nonconforming, 
um, they won't be able to add on to the nonconformity, but they could use it or the duplex. If it's already a duplex, they could use it as a duplex. Um, the height limit and roof pitch, maximum of 35 feet for de detached single family dwellings, which falls in line with our current code. Lot coverage in PNDs. What I'm, what was, what we're suggesting here is because PND shall be located on one lot, the, de the de developer is going to have to determine the square footage of lot space for each individual dwelling unit in order to calculate future accessory structures for those dwelling units. So in essence, you're still going to see lot lines, even though it's going to be considered one lot. We would still want a drawing showing where the lot lines are so we can sure. calculate this. Um, and I did put in there that there was an example in another piece of legislation that only one garage is allowed per dwelling unit. Accessory structures for common usage are allowed in the common open space areas with other accessory structures prohibited. Um, meaning, um, for example, they may have had a uh, storage unit for gardening for the whole common area. They might have had something that everybody could use. Um, or do we want to just leave it as, it as we have it here? I like leaving it as we have it. Okay. Um, the maximum lot coverage permitted for principal accessory structures in P&D shall be limited to that allowed in that corresponding residential zoning district. So in other words then, if, 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 if someone comes and they want to put an accessory structure there, based on what the square footage of that individual lot within that whole larger lot and what they have on there is a house if, if, if the square footage can be 50 percent um, like in residential C up to 50 percent then they could do that that's kind of what this saying if it's residential B it'd be like 40 percent residential A I think it's 35 percent 35 yeah but what, what will be important is, is for me to be able to see that there's the, the, each lot has a defined area in order to be able to calculate, or I won't be able to calculate it. Well, isn't this going to be for the total lot, the entire pocket neighborhood coverage? Well, it would be for that too, as well, right? Okay. Um, okay. It kind of is. So that means that goes back to the question about if you have a shared accessory structure. And as long as it fits in the maximum lot coverage, then it could I be mean, proposed and... Well, I mean, most of that the are, are common open space areas. So they're going to be huge, those common open space areas. So one accessory structure should not be an issue. Which is why you want it to meet for the entire lot, don't you? Not the individual sublots? Well, I don't know, because then um, would we get to a point where five or six people would have put accessory structures on their individual lots and then because it goes over the total of the whole lot if that happened then they wouldn't be other people wouldn't be able to I don't know that's what that means well then do you, would you want to go back to allowing one garage per dwelling unit or not or not that at all, because I know we were trying to have parking lot areas. You see the difference in this discussion? I do. You guys have an opinion? So I, I don't understand the question. Well, so, so Denise is looking at this two ways. The, the, the large parcel, the percent coverage, and then also each individual dwelling unit is going to have a, a a sublot essentially, and she's looking at the percentage coverage of each of those sublots as well. To, to, to in, in, in that the um, the existing code has a maximum lot coverage for structures. So in residence A, you can only have thirty-five percent lot coverage maximum. In B, it's forty, and C, it's fifty. And so, depending upon where this pocket neighborhood is, that would be. But doesn't the common open space 
um, negate that? Like, it's be, if you need a minimum, minimum of 400 square feet per dwelling unit, then that's... And actually, I mean, this is non-covered, too, right? This is non-developed, or doesn't mm -hmm. it? It's Open says, space. I mean, I feel like that would cover it. You, the, I, I don't think we should think about this as sub-lots at all. Well, uh, we're not going to be able to calculate setbacks, then, or just not well, have you, that. Just you not calculate that. the setbacks. I mean, the, set, the, the setbacks right. are on the outside right. of the major lot, right. the main lot, right? You don't... Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there's no interior setbacks. I mean, the... Well, you have to get that some. Okay, some interior setback, but it would be the same, it would, from house to house, right? right. I as mean, opposed to lot line to lot yeah. line. Yeah. Which, it, you could do that on, it would be a, like a double setback, right? Because hmm. you couldn't, you can't build right on. Well, yeah, it's not really, really the setbacks, it's more the accessory structures. Because you could have... If you have a zero lot line, it was whatever we want, or you could say have to be 15 feet from an adjacent, 15 feet between buildings. Mm -hmm. I mean, we could do that and right. not have those lot lines, but I think it's just more for calculating the accessory structures. So, oh, from what what are you measuring the accessory structures from? Like what what setback are they? Not, from it's not a, a setback. She's using the square footage. We've got two different topics. Oh, yeah. the square yeah. footage of the, the coverage, the the percentage coverage. of coverage. Yeah. Uh, for the except for any accessory dwelling. Yeah. For accessory no, structures. No, no accessory dwelling. It's just accessory structure. Yeah. Does it help you at all to go back to the concept? Just to look at the concept. Uh, when you think about the accessory structure issue and what it is that you're trying to do with the pocket neighborhood at all, which is a, a set of dwellings with common space which is commonly used as opposed to trying to figure out how each of those dwellings can have its own garage right. or shed yep. or because, I mean, I think it, then it's diverting from That's what just high density. Yeah. That's not anything yeah. different. Right? Yeah, we're not, we're not talking about a high density PUD we're talking about shared right so Denise on D yes you're thinking that maybe that sentence that you have there maybe we should include it about only one garage is allowed per dwelling unit and well, well I think it's what everybody's saying is maybe cross out that be the second sentence um, and then maybe the because yes and then maybe say instead make a statement about accessory structures just um, maybe the size of an accessory structure yeah because you know we're gonna have a common space with the homeowners I mean the, the land will be owned by the homeowners association right and so mm -hmm. there's no real lots right within the That's pocket true. neighborhood all right so let's strike that out so because everything because and beyond is yeah, gone. It's underlined. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I guess we just leave it at that, and it just would be based on um, that maximum lot cover. If somebody comes and wants to put an accessory structure next to their house, yeah. um, do we want to have any language as far as setbacks to the house for the accessory structure or do or to state that it follows the this the um, uh, 66 percent or 800 square feet whichever is less well at least wouldn't want to see an accessory structure end up being bigger than the house sure sure I just you know. I agree well wouldn't it have to be approved by the homeowners association mm -hmm. yep you would think so So you're not suggesting that we put in this, the other sentence that you have? No, I was just saying that there was one that had that. Because um. now I'm thinking maybe that is a good idea to have <laughs> only one garage per dwelling and that accessory structures for the common usage are allowed in common open spaces with other accessory structures prohibited. Yeah. 
But if, if somebody decides to build little tiny houses, then a person could come along then and put little tiny garages. Well, I know. I mean, they could put a giant, giant square garages. foot garage. Yeah. Bigger than the house. Bigger than the house. Yeah. Do we care? Okay. I think it would look and then good. they'd live in the garage. And <laughs> oh, they wouldn't be allowed to do that. We, we, had, we did do our permit. It just wouldn't I mean, tell you. I mean, if it was a shared garage. It'd be an Airbnb. <laughs> It's residential let's, let's usage. Let's move on and, and let's maybe look, come back to that because there's a section on parking, so maybe okay. we'll resolve that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, how about yard setbacks? I like those. I know we didn't want them originally, but I think what she wrote ha that we almost have to have them. Well, and, and that's what I was thinking about external versus internal setbacks. Like from the property line, because the setbacks from property lines are for the protection of the neighbors as well, um, right? So you don't want to buy a house and then have somebody build something right on your property line. So, I mean, there's that setback from your neighbor's property, but then there's internal setbacks between the individual houses in the... So these are the external setbacks. I mean, the setbacks for for front yards, rear yards, and side yards. But not between the houses that are... See, I think we ought to maintain the external setbacks that are part of the code already. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, I, I, I agree with what she says in this, that it would defeat the purpose of the P&D, which is to have a more compact area of the dwelling. Well, but if you use the setbacks that we have now for the existing, in the existing code for the residence A, B, and C, and you use that for the perimeter, and then internally you can have smaller distances between the individual yeah, structures. Not necessarily setbacks, are just like in, in separation distances between the pocket neighborhood dwellings. Well, Denise, what did you mean by your paragraph below? Well, um, if we had, if we, if we required these large setbacks, 25 feet in the front, 25 feet in the rear, then, um, you know, if this is a, a one acre lot or half an acre lot in the RC, and they have, they could put up to 14 units, they wouldn't be able to do that. Um, I don't know. If it, I, one of the things I've noticed in some PUDs that we have around here, like for example, the Stancliffe neighborhood, that PUD, it says, I think it's like um, <coughs> the front yard setback is like seven feet from the property line. The, 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 the house has to be at least 15 feet from another house. But that's within the PUD. Yeah. That's not distance from a property line with another neighbor that just happens to own adjacent property well it, it's it's measuring from i mean they may have a property line which they do in there but it's it, but if that how that house has to be a, if someone's going to build a house they have to make sure that on, in their property they can set it wherever they want to as long as it's 15 feet mm -hmm. from the house that's next to them Right, but that's within that PUD. Those are the rules for right, that PUD. That. Yeah, that's not setbacks. I'm talking from, about the rules between NRA between the individual properties. That has to stay consistent. So you're saying for that you're saying the 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 outer rim would be considered the yes. yes. Yeah, that yeah, considered yes. the backyard then? Because remember, we don't, we don't have lots anymore, right? Okay. Internal so lots. So that would be considered the, so the outer rim would be like the backyard. The inner area is uh, going to no. be the. Front I was just thinking road frontage is the yeah. front. Just like if it was a re if if the P if the pocket neighborhood in it, its entirety was a house and you could build a house that big, you couldn't build the house too close. You know, like none of those houses could could bleed over into oh, so where so. a giant so. house wouldn't be allowed yeah. to okay, build. So. And then anything internally, it doesn't matter as long as they keep like having that 400 square feet common area. Yeah, I mean, I think there yeah. probably needs to be some minimum separation 
Does but, there have to be? Well, I think just well, for fire, think fire protection and that kind of stuff. Well, and, they would have to follow fire hazard code, right? Like, that's not us. I don't know. Why, why, yeah, why would we want to set a minimum separation? Is and it like, just like visibility or the way it looks? I mean, aesthetics? Well, you could pack be, too many in there? We don't want to be what? driving well, to you, It has a maximum that you can have. Yeah. A minimum and a maximum, so. But, Maybe but there's a, alone, but if, you know, we're saying at least a walkway. Oh, there I, are supposed to be walkways. We, there so. are supposed to be right. sidewalks. You could require that. I mean, I, 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 I think that's why that's paired with the exterior setbacks is to give you that extra space for those weird lots where you have, where you can't meet those, those outside setbacks and then still get all the stuff in the same, pro I mean, if, if, so the, the, there's, there's lots in town, certainly, where you could fit 14 things, but not with the exterior setbacks if you're requiring 10 feet between every every building, right? Yeah. So that the, in order to get all your units on there, you are, are setting a minimum distance between them might prohibit people from being uh -huh. able to reach uh -huh. their, their, require, their allowed density. Um, and I think that the, within reason, I mean, the walkways and things like that would be hopefully implicated into the plan anyways. So, okay, so if we say that we're just gonna keep the, external setbacks as already defined in the code can we scratch f for the so we would yeah, take out f yeah, yeah. scratch it or just say setbacks are as described in 124803 say, say it setbacks are as yeah, just to make it clear are what as described okay. in the and table 124803a Okay. So then Denise has a little section here about setbacks and so you got the exterior setbacks, but then she has a little section here about interior separation. Are we saying we don't probably don't need to worry about that? Because that's gonna be driven by fire code. Yeah. Uh I don't know if this well, right the case. So no. Well that yeah, that came from another that was another example. And but but if we if we don't uh, <clears throat> I mean, five, five feet is, uh, is, so are we saying that not is what a ADA sidewalk is, right? I don't know what it is, but there's some, I'm, I'm sure it's like prescribed. Yeah. <laughs> so are you, are you saying then, pretty much then, uh, if we keep it described in Table A, for the front and rear yards, we're like, like you gave us that example of that house, I mean, we're looking at that as being the, the exterior perimeters. It has to be set back either like 25 feet or 20 feet. Depending on depending what on zone it's in. Yeah. So that's the exterior setbacks. The rear is the exterior. Or, or, or the rear would be the rear. Just like. I mean, the, the outside of the property like is the exterior. Yeah, so the exterior. one lot. You just take whatever house is furthest back. Yeah. You would do it from that. Would be the rear and whatever one's closest to the front. That would be the first so if someone tore down your house to make a pocket neighborhood, well, actually, you moved out this so I, I, township, I, I, didn't you? Okay, so it's like, what is front, what is back? I mean, this is where well, the, the road, road frontage is the front. The road frontage would be the front, so that they'd have to be okay. Yeah, just like Based a house. On road frontage, okay. Just like a, how do you usually, how do you usually it's say what frontage. is front and what is that? Okay, and then for side yard, could be just as you determine it now. Yeah, and that should. I think we should say shall be instead it, of saying the, actual tables, say as in the residential corresponding residential zoning district, because that's what we say everywhere else. Yeah, that makes sense. So I don't know if we should for now for yeah. over in instead this. of putting yep. as in table. Okay, just put as in the corresponding residential zoning district. So are these pocket neighborhoods are going to be like pocket neighborhood A, pocket neighborhood B. Because it's a new zone, right? So really, yes, no, it's a new zone, right? No. Oh, no, it's a conditional use. use. Okay, I'm sorry. I thought we were doing a new zone. Yes, that's what we had talked about before. We had talked about that before. Yeah. Okay. This conditional. So, okay. With this regard to your simpler. comment though about interior setbacks, and I'm just again throwing this out as devil's advocate, because sometimes things that you do you're weighing the benefit or disadvantage to 
the resident, and sometimes you're bringing benefit or disadvantage to a developer. And when I look at it, I see an advantage to a developer and a disadvantage to a resident when you remove interior setbacks, when you remove space between so dwellings. Sure. Because now I can throw you in there like little rats in a cage, and it's okay, the zoning code lets me do it. But they, but they can only put in the maximum amount that's allowed. But that's 14 for dwellings. On an acre in C. Yeah. So like, B, it's, but it's, that it's, difference might mean an entire mo another unit. You know, if you could get an, an an entire other unit if you only left five feet instead of ten feet. Well, let's just make it five feet. Let's just make it five feet. Though. But I'm just saying, if you I mean, she's saying what you're doing, you what I do think you more. should do is consider quality of life. Yeah. Because that's what you're you have before yeah. you. You get to determine. <laughs> Whether you're advantaging a developer or you're advantaging a resident at this time. Right. And then, I mean, and then that will stay that way. It's, I mean, it, I don't know. I, I was just under the sort of the impression that the kind of, I mean, that this was, this pocket neighborhood thing was like sort of something that people would buy into in general, but they, they, they would want to live there. But then, like, if that's the only housing available, then that's. Except that, you yeah. allowed it to be, it could be one owner yeah. who rents out all of those units. Right. That was a decision that was made at the last meeting. So, right. in fact, not it necessarily. Just, it could just be Hawthorne or something. You know. mm -hmm. yeah. and, and, and these aren't going to be single family attached. These are only going to be single family dwelling units. Right. So, right. so we have to have some kind of separation. I mean, what, so. We're saying that we allow this particular sort of way around the rules because it's a good communal decision for. Yellow Springs to allow this kind of dense development if it if it meets these standards, right? Right, right. I mean, because otherwise they can come with the PUD. They can go through the yeah. PUD process. Right. Right. They could still do that. I mean, mm -hmm. so we if they want to do something more dense. So if we want, to, we're not stripping away all of the requirements. I understand what you're saying. I definitely think it should be more than five feet between. Like, so maybe what we're saying in here, if it's in residential C on the side yard, five feet can be the least with, with a total of, um, well, five on each side if it's RC. If it's RB, five would be the least, a total of 15. So if you're going to be up to five feet on one side, you've got to be at least 15 on the other. And that right. will probably gauge any other houses as well. But you can complete. You don't have to follow those setback requirements at all because you've already done your external setbacks. Right. Yeah. So right. internally, you can say simply there should be X amount of space between structures. Right. Yeah. yeah. Period. You don't yeah. Have yeah. To it's, it's not a setback yeah. issue. Yeah. We should well, put the setbacks. Well, we're trying yeah. to discourage, right? As someone going in, being like, um, just parceling, saying, okay, here's the 400 square feet um, per dwelling unit over here. Let's cram in as many single family dwelling units over here. You're part of a homeowners association now. Ta da. Congratulations. Yeah. You pay me this much money a month. I mean, if we're going to do that, then why are they single family dwelling units and not apartments if we're talking about actual, like, you right. know, housing stock, uh, like adding housing stock? Which is not what we're doing. Right. So it sounds like we do need some, some spacing. So what is that number? I don't know, because I, I think it's driven by, <clears throat> I hear what Rose is saying, but on an acre of land in C, you can't do more than 14 units. So it doesn't matter if you want to put in 20, you can only do 14. In B, you can only do, what, 8, and then... A, you can only do, what, six. So it's driven by that. You, a, a develop, developer can't put any more in. And well, isn't the plan going to have to be approved? Yes. Mm -hmm. So Because it is a conditional use. Yeah, so it will certainly, they'll come. It, what's, what's, the, what's, what's the legal space, like, right for a fire? I don't know. I mean, what's, what's that? Is there, is there, like, a... Um, I have I mean, if, that, if that's like a reasonable space, I mean, right. Does the county have anything? I watch 
Um, I, um, <clears throat> in the site plan review, which is um, what we're going to require that they do a level B site plan review, um, there is a section in Chapter 126806, Emergency Access. All buildings and structures, including any fire department connections, shall be readily accessible to emergency vehicles. Yeah. And that's going to be our major uh, consideration when we are approving these things, right? I was right. including a slum law, obviously, like I think what you were saying. Like that's what we're not trying to do is create like a, a situation where someone could come across the Yeah, in fact, I was uh, having second thoughts about our discussion about the rental property and whether should we should have some percentage be rental or not all, so that you do avoid someone creating kind of a rental. So you're saying like limiting the, the, the percentage of, of rentals that are allowed on there? Yeah, so like 50%. Yeah. No, I, I, uh, no, no more than 50% are rentals or something like that, so that you do have vested owners oh, I agree. scattered amongst the renters so that a person can't create this little fiefdom of uh, rental properties. Yeah, it sounds really weird now. You keep talking, <laughs> talking about it like that. Um, <laughs> I mean, I don't know if that's something to think about. All right, so we just went all over the map there. Yeah, so we're, what do we kind of decide on yard setbacks? <laughs> we're just going to I think we need to look and see what's required by the code. And it may be that that's sufficient. And we may need to go to the county to ask them. Well, and I, I mean, it leaves it pretty open, readily accessible, which means that if you've got, let's say, a circular drive around your units, and they all that front the circular enough. drive, you're good to go. I mean, uh, it's just sort of a reasonable. Yeah. I mean, that, that to me is reasonable. And then you're back to the question of, how do you want those units to look and how much space do you want people to have as they walk out the door before they bump into their neighbor? How different will it look sitting in residence A than, it, than the house next to it that has two acres and a nice, spacious, slightly small mansion on it? I mean, it, it's about fitting in with the, the existing neighborhood to some degree, which is where your site plan thing comes in. I just think. I mean, Stan Cliff gives some guidelines. This amount of space between each dwelling, that, it, that just seems sort of like a reasonable thing to me. And then if someone brings you a site plan and says, well, we're going we're gonna to cluster these over here for this reason, but we're going to put extra space up, you have some leeway. But I just think if you don't set any kind of minimum amount of space between dwellings, you could get something that just doesn't look like it fits in the neighborhood or is not aesthetically pleasing to the person living there either. Do you know if the minimum requirement that was in RC met the, that obviously meets the code, right? I hope so. <laughs> yeah, so. I mean, it's five feet for a side yard. So, I mean, we, yeah. So that takes you back to 10 feet between structures. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's, yeah, we might as well do that then. I, why don't we just go with that? And then yeah. it, it, it is a conditional use, and if they w right. want to ask for um, some relief on that, because like funny, funny shit properties, are, I, I just think of weird like situations where like it might not necess it might necessarily not be the same, make, you know, as bad to have a house that close. But yeah, all right, that's what. I mean. What do you think? And you, you think so. and, and you're thinking maybe I'm okay with that. But are following the minimum yard setbacks for for each one, or you could have been sure. For everything, <laughs> yeah. no, no, no internal setbacks, just okay. separation between buildings, right? Yeah, yeah, and then, and then the external setbacks stay as they are, right? Per per residential, residential district. Right. Um, so you don't need the interior lot lines. Are you saying so that this way you don't have to use interior lot lines as a gauge? It's no. simply this much uh, amount structures. of space between dwellings. Yeah. That's the end. minimum. Yeah. Between dwellings or structures? Right? Structures. I'm structures. Sorry. Yeah, I think it's tall. Well. So you need to define it as dwelling. But so you're saying 10 feet between each dwelling? Yeah, yes. well, it's probably just the, the, the garage structure might be a little bit closer. I mean, I, I but is that going to be for if it's an RA, RB, or RC, or is it going to be 15 feet if it's RB and no, 20 feet if it's RA? No, it's just 10. Okay. 
just because of the, the numbers themselves will sort of yeah. regulate that. And then following the yard setbacks as described in the corresponding residential districts for the, the uh, front and rear? Just for the uh, perimeter. Okay. All right, cool. Are we okay with that? Yeah. Probably we're going to have another hearing on this. <laughs> yes, we yes. have to clean it up. Yeah. <laughs> so. Let's Chris get back. Car joke. <laughs> You okay with that? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Okay, so do you want to go to uh, required common open space? Four hundred per dwelling. And there's probably an S after your unit, right there, in the second line. Fifty percent of the units shall abut common open space. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, I was confused about that too. I thought you know, like people said the structures all had, each structure had to about this. They do. It just needs an S. 50% of the units shall abut come over space and all shall be within 60 feet. Each unit, 50% of the. Wait, so each unit, 50% yeah. of, of its. No, no, no. 50% of all the units have to be touching, right? Okay. Yeah. Should it be says an S. Unit. I know. Oh, okay. There should be an S. That's, what, that's, that's where I was confused. Okay, yeah. That didn't make sense to me either. Seems strange of this. And then in Denise's discussion, there's a, a discussion about, you know, private versus public. Um, I don't know if we want to dive into that or not. That sounds like something that we could probably just be discussed during the site plan process. And it sounded like some of them allowed part of that public to be private. It, it, mm -hmm. You would have private. I rather like that. <laughs> it was like saying, like, out of 400 square feet, 200 could, like, be. could be, has to be usable open space adjacent to the cottage for everybody, and 200 at least two. Yeah. So you could have essentially your flower beds around your house yes, or whatever. Yes, your yeah. Garden. yeah, I like it's, that. So do you want to say half of it? Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Is that okay with you? Wait, so, so are, we, are we requiring that there's now 200 private space? No, we would say that that half could be. Could be. Up to half could be. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I like that. I like that. So that we can have a garden outside your back door. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or just like a little mini yard that's your own for whatever reason. Right. Okay. Try my hand to We blew right through that section. Yeah. <laughs> private. Okay. Private. Okay. Okay. Uh, Member's favorite topic: parking. parking. Yeah, that's always one of my favorites. <coughs> so we had talked about one and a half spaces per dwelling unit. Yes. And another example I found was one space for each one bedroom dwelling and two spaces for each dwelling having two or more bedrooms. How, how, how is like a parking space to define right now? What, what, is that, what does a half space mean necessarily? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. I have it's no idea. That's yeah. Get them all Smart car. Yeah. Well, well, that's why I kind of like the one space for one bedroom and yeah. two spaces for two bedrooms. Well, you, you have to round up, right? Yeah, you do. Right. You just round up if you have, <laughs> right, if you have well, one dwelling unit, then you have two spaces. Well, the other way to do it is if you're developing five, then you, you have need, two dwelling units, you have You need five you spaces need plus another half, so that would be seven and a half. You round it up to eight. Yeah. yeah. So if you had five. All right. That yeah. should be clearer. Of uh, which some of these don't have to be, yeah. Uh, you don't particularly have to have all your parking spaces at the at your dwelling. Yeah. Whole. Right. Just yeah, if you had two room. units, you would need three. If you had three units, you would need how many is that? Five. Five. Yeah. Because you need four and a half, so you'd yeah. round up to five. Yeah. I'm okay with that. Me too. Other people are too. Leave it the way it was. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Location. And we don't want to, we don't want to, mm, 
clarify what a one half space is? No. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> They'll find out. <laughs> it's for a motorcycle. Or yeah, car, right? Okay. Bicycles. Parking location. Essentially, on the property, uh, as unobtrusive as, unobtrusive as possible. Yeah. Do we need to go any further than that? Well, the location, it doesn't just say yes. Yeah, I think that's fine. Yeah. I don't know if it has anything, <coughs> sorry, in our zoning code about the materials that you use <coughs> for a parking lot, you know? I mean, if it's. Did did the hotel need special approval for their parking? They did only because their stormwater management program includes um, that big reservoirs. Is it the there's permissible? Lot. Yeah, it's permissible. Yeah, so there's but there's actually a reservoirs underneath the parking lot mm -hmm. that uh, allow the water to stormwater. the stormwater to to dissipate at a more gentle fat in a more gentle fashion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think we would, we would just use normal approval for that. It's part of the uh, review, right? Yeah. So we don't need to add all these extra things. It's sort of always kind of already in our code. <coughs> and then we can, as a, as a commission, you can talk about it. Yep. Okay. All right. Okay, so then I is kind of some of the other standards. So we said detached single family. Mm -hmm. So accessory. I think that should be a percentage for the, for rental. And that no for for detached and for rental, owned and rented. I think both should be a percentage, but I can start. talk Wait. about it separately. What are you talking about, detached? Number one, PNDs are limited to detached single family dwelling units, <coughs> period. Well, it gets on down to number five. Uh, and you don't five. want that? I, I, I would like listed. that to be <coughs> that that's required for some of it, but that it's not required for all of it. Well, how, what would a. Because sharing walls is good for the environment. <laughs> So you're saying you would you would want to consider some duplex type? Yes. I mean, if the site plan was good, I mean, right, right, that, that all of us are coming through. I, mean, I, I, I see what you mean. I think it makes sense. Like, um, what's the if if it's if it's ten feet between, you know, if it's ten feet unused space between dwelling single family dwelling units, why is, I mean, you know, you know, like if we're talking about if. If some, if only some of it is going to be allowed to be rented, right, which I'm in favor of, then I think some of it should be allowed to be, I don't, I don't think there's anything necessarily in, inherently bad about a apartment building. I don't think, like, in so our You're talking about a duplex, not an apartment code, building. But our, our regular code is a duplex different than an yeah, apartment building? Yeah, a duplex building. is not an apartment <coughs> building. An apartment is considered more than two. Mm -hmm. oh, that's my understanding. Okay. Well, yeah, we could limit how many units, okay. right? So two family is not permitted in RA right now. Yeah, it's just but it is in B and C. So, so A, you could but not allow. But we're putting two families there. I mean, what's the difference? Or it's in our if it's going to be an RA and there's two families, what's the difference between having ten feet between them if what? it's on one lot? Well again I think it's a question of of the other folks in that district. Yeah. It's just like the setbacks. But if the units if the number of units is the same, we're adding, you know, if if there's no there's no distance between the two units at all. If there's a shared wall, that just means more common area. If the if the lot is the same size and the units are the same size, I I understand I, I that. We're requiring that there be five feet, ten feet total. I'm confused now. Well, what she's saying though is, if you have a duplex, <coughs> you share a wall, then you actually have 
you, you combine this space that would have been there between the buildings with the other space and you have a larger. I don't think I want to change A. If A doesn't allow um, duplexes, then I don't think we should allow them in this. What's A? Residential. Residential. Yeah. Can, Residential. Oh, okay. Can you get around that by saying something like shared walls are permissible as stated for that particular residential district or some some language to that effect so that well, we're already getting around the the no no duplexes allowed in a B, because we're allowing more you we're allowing more units in a that's the whole point well but, but we're only allowing six <laughs> In our NRA. But part of the discussion an we had initially when Ted was here is that pocket neighborhoods are more successful when they look like the surrounding community. Uh -huh. And so if the surrounding community is all single family homes, but then it's going to be more acceptable to that neighborhood if they're single family homes. And there's nothing preventing it from being those things. I don't know what success means in that. Well, that the neighbors and everyone is happier. I mean, he gave us the information we yeah. had to read. Okay. And, it, and it talked about that people that complained about uh, the pocket neighborhoods, it was when they didn't architecturally look like the rest of the community, when they were, you know, a variety of things that are, were different. I think Yellow Springs has a diverse housing market that nothing looks like the things around it really well, there's a little bit of that going on for sure <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think I agree with Susan though I think we need to to, to say it's permitted in B and C and and not in an A and that's the way the code's written now yeah it's just easier than trying to because then we're actually changing the code yeah we should we should definitely add it though because like there's no reason why BNC shouldn't have it if it's allowed. Yeah, you know, right. It. But yeah, right. definitely. Yeah. And do we want to though limit how many of the <coughs> dwellings can be duplexes? Well, how many are oh, we yeah. allowing to be rented? I think those goes hand in hand. Why well, would just say fifty percent of each? I th I think that's as a starting point. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've got to hear this again next month. Yeah. yeah. Let's just use that as a starting point, mm -hmm. and we can discuss it further next is month. This, this is going to council about the staff. It comes back to us, doesn't yeah, it? We're not. Oh, we're making so many changes. Yeah. So many changes. It's going to need to come yeah. back. So fifty percent can be duplexes, and fifty percent can be rentals. Fifty percent. In B and C. In B and C. No, uh, so there's no, nothing no, else no, no, under number five. The dwelling units may be individually owned or rented, is what we had. So that's where we want to throw that in. We're going to change. We're, we're changing 50, both. Fifty percent here. One and five. Fifty percent of B and C duplex. Okay. And then on five, we just say fifty percent could be rented. Yeah, but yeah, not more than fifty percent rental. Not more. Instead of residential, in residential, no more than single family. Okay, but. We are changing some things in just duplexes. There are not single family attempts. Things in here that we're changing that we're allowing in A that we haven't allowed in A before, right? Pocket neighborhoods. Pocket neighborhoods. Yeah. But lots of these requirements go against the requirements of A and we're just saying the detached single dwelling units is not something that we're comfortable changing for A with pocket neighborhoods. I'm not, not yet. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. And it mainly because I think Rose, I'm thinking more about the neighbors. The, yeah. the, the adjoining property mm -hmm. who have some expectation as to what's going to happen yeah, but this couldn't happen when they bought their house. Like this wouldn't be allowed when they bought their house necessarily. They didn't opt in to live right. next to a pocket neighborhood. I mean, that was my whole thing with the setbacks, with the exterior setbacks remaining, because like if you want to live in a pocket neighborhood, if you choose, or if like that's just a situation when you get there, that's different than with you like you that if you for twenty years and now right. I have someone living right next to me, you know. Right. Uh, so so this fifty percent so we're talking it's two family 
Is that how we call it in the code? Uh, it says dwelling, dwelling duplex, no, it says dwelling to family. Dwelling to family. Accessory structures, um, as well as the general provisions and lot coverage requirements of the residential code. We we'll come back and try to remember what we had decided on that. We were going to kind of come back to that. The accessory structures? Yeah, we were going to come back to that because we weren't really sure on that lot coverage thing that we wanted to do. As far as whether we want to spell out one garage with lot per dwelling unit or not, or how we we're going to calculate that. I mean, right now we have the maximum lot coverage permitted for principal and accessory structures in PMD shall be limited to that allowed in the corresponding residential zoning district. Well, do we say there um, lot coverage including garages and accessory structures? I don't. I don't know. You can now that you've just said ten feet between structures. I mean. I guess I guess if the developer maybe wanted to put 30 feet between structures and allow for accessory dwellings or ex I'm sorry accessory structures well or they could so, have the accessory structure at the back at the rear as long as they meet that 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 perimeter that exterior perimeter right, right? Yeah, you said 10 between dwellings not necessarily just structures right it was the dwellings that the 10 feet was not for all structures on the property I think we said yeah, dwellings. Dwellings, you're right. Yeah, so it should be fine if it was in the, in the rear. Um, so accessory structures shall be allowed. <laughs> uh, it really, they really can't follow the the general provisions because general provisions would say an accessory structure could be ten feet from the rear. And we and they really can't. They have to follow the the exterior. Where are you? Right here. Other P and D standards. Ah, okay. Where's, where's that? Number two. We just finished number one. P &D yep. Standard. Okay. Accessory structure. <clears throat> I mean, if, if you already changed the setback part, would that would that would that, that just negate that anyways? No. I mean, we we, we need it. Um, I mean, we need to make sure we don't say you can follow the general provisions. That's in conflict because the general provisions allows an accessory structure to be five feet from the side and ten feet from the rear. Right. right. So we need to, like, at least, we could just say they're allowed um, and lot coverage requirements. Um, And or accessory structures shall be allowed and must follow the lot coverage requirements. Of the well, the co sure. lot coverage, the lot is so huge, technically. Oh, so we haven't really come to a conclusion on that as to how we were going to figure that. Could we base it on the size of the dwelling unit that it belongs to? Does it have to? If it's a sh if it's shared, then it's a percentage of the common area if it's not shared then it's a percentage of the house does that work our, our current code says 66 percent of the of the house of the house okay or 800 square feet whichever is less so okay. that would yeah. keep you from that would work yeah for the non-shared non-shared but if they're shared they should be allowed to be bigger than that but you don't want a 66 percent of the common area no <laughs> <laughs> maybe i do <laughs> well if it were like a clubhouse yeah, I mean, it could be, it could <laughs> well, be. Well, what if it was, what if it was a percentage of all of the units combined? Yeah. Because it could be a, a common space yeah. building. Right. So what? Like a common 20% or 25% of the common, of the common 
or the square foot of the dwellings? <coughs> I would have to know what that would look like. I know, that's a little bit of a stretch. <laughs> like, on an acre, when you're allowed six, <laughs> six yeah. units and you need this many, it, you know, square footage of, of common open space, how big would that shared? I, I would need to look at the math. Yeah. Can we get some examples for next time of what that would look like? I don't know. Well, look. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> no? I feel like I've covered every one that I have seen and have added everything in that I found. You have. You've, real, you've given us lots of information. All the stuff that I added in here came from multiple sources. Well, if you have 400 square feet per dwelling, and what's our could the be minimum four, number? 14, if it were C, it, on an acre. If there's 14 units on an acre. And so 400 by 14. I mean, an acre is 49,000 some square feet. So, so that's 5,600 square feet of common area. OK, so how big are the houses with all the setbacks is what you have to call it. Yeah. You know? What's yeah. the biggest house you could put What's in? the biggest house? If you put all of those houses, they were the biggest you could make with all the setbacks, then how big of a common accessory you, you The other thing we can do make. is just let the homeowners association figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, exactly. They have to approve it anyway. Right. Well, maybe you could set a not more than a maximum of X percent of something and the only reason I say that is that then Denise has the horrible task ten years down the road when a particular homeowner wants now to build a garage after the site plan's been approved after now we're well down the road yep. and somebody's got to go back and look at oh well can you actually make build a garage now and how many square feet are already in use and is even if the homeowners association says yeah go ahead everybody sure go ahead and have a garage Denise has to have some way of knowing right. yes or no to that garage well, for the, if they belong to the house, then we've already said that. Yep. If it if it's a common <coughs> accessory unit, mm -hmm. then maybe twenty five percent of the common area. So one of these, one of these examples talked about hard service patios versus. Oh yeah, it had well, to do. That's with one it. half, though. It's yeah. Which which we kind of got that that two out of that four hundred two hundred being private, so mm -hmm. if they wanted to put that hard surface patio in that that area. They yeah. Could. But um, is there something somewhere else that, like to me, that's not a lot of um, common area. I mean. Wouldn't there need to be other places where there was, I mean, common areas are going to be where those parking lots are at, too, but. Um, no, well, we're the talking common about open space is not where the parking lots are. But, yeah. They're different. So we're talking 400 square feet per dwelling, half of which is common. So if you have 10 units, that's 2,000 square feet. Has nothing to do with that's, parking. That's. I think there was something in the PUD that like had to be like like seventy was it like a percentage of common versus where the house is. Yeah, maybe I'm just Well, I understand what you're saying though. I mean that's yeah. not yeah. well so that kinda goes back to the hard surface thing though. Yeah. Doesn't it? Yeah. Or we can say the parking area is excluded from the common open space. Yeah. That would be pretty simple. That. Yeah. Does that make sense? That's what we want, right? Exclude the parking from the just say. Oh, of course. That's what that's what our conversation about what is common open space was last time we talked about. So, this. so under two location A, we need to add that uh, parking is excluded from the. And in G. Back up. Let's hope that this is going to be feasible. 
I don't think anyone's. Oh, someone builds one, right? That's all this work. <laughs> well, that's the other thing too is we can talk to Ted and have him review this, because Ted Donnell has given us this some thought probably as much yeah, as we have. Yeah, I think it would be good to have Ted look at it. And could somebody actually build the maximum number of units? So parking, uh, driveways, roads are not part of the common open space? Yes. And if someone had a problem with any one of these, they could just be like, I want a PUD exactly <coughs> like this, but with this change, and, a, and apply for that, right? Or they could give us plans to say, can you guys give me relief on this as a condition of the, of the deal? Oh, yeah. PND. Got that, kind of? Yeah, um, okay, so if accessory structure shall be allowed and must not exceed 66% of the primary dwelling room, there's of course feet, whichever is less, and must meet the required exterior setback or ex exterior, is that how you want to say that? Because we, we, we don't want- we, You don't want they, that, that same perimeter setback? Yeah, well I want that same yeah, perimeter. Yeah, and, yeah. Yeah, and, and must- uh, Just call it that. Miss be within the required exteriors. Must be. Um, and then also um, in the code, you know, in our code, you can't have an accessory structure in a front yard. So. Right. So. Well, this is different. I mean. I mean. Well, you wouldn't the, be allowed. The front, is gonna, the front yard is going to be the common area, common open space area. No, not necessarily. The common open space area could be in the back or the middle. The center. Though. The center. I keep, I keep yeah. picturing it like that. Yeah. This is certainly a, a little different, though. I'm not sure we can say front or back here. I mean, we sh maybe we should, you know, like make at least the, some of the units face the street. I think it's. I think it's obvious that like you you, you might. I mean, because like. Your your common area like that could be part of like the setback, right? Obviously. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I mean, you advantageously you'd, you'd want to have that part of it. You could have you can't, a big ring with all the houses. Yeah, because you, you can't build there anyway, so you might as well like use. That. I mean, mm -hmm. right? I mean, so you would think that would at least incentivize people to use the frontage, mm -hmm. where the largest setback is, right? As part of that open space. Right. Yeah. Right. Do you, well, have the thing? you could say something like that. You don't you don't want to permit accessory structures between the road frontage and dwelling units. Yeah. yeah, that would prevent, that would maintain the keeping with the neighborhood. Uh -huh. Yeah. yeah. The, the minor oh, garage. Gee, that's oh, good. Yeah. I mean, they, they, they do that actually. Yeah. Yeah. Four dozen yeah. just yeah. garages, all over one garage. Like little so that would prevent it from being right yeah. in front. Okay. The houses behind the garage, but all you see is like a garage and like three windows. Okay. Um. You're right, some garages are in front of houses. Yeah, it's gross looking. I don't like it. Well, you may not like it, but... It, I mean, it's, it's, it's for density reasons, though. That's why, you know, you can stack them real close to each other, though. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Let's see two cards under Okay. Let's see. Oh, my God. Almost the last page. Okay. Okay, so four is the Homeowners Association discussion about open space. Um, and I think that under number six, four looks. I mean, under number six, a level B site plan review is required. And I think I think we can scratch out all the other stuff because in the site plan review, we really do cover stormwater management and all that stuff. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, and then you got the fifty percent, not more than fifty percent rental on five. Um. Do we want? Yeah. Or. or but not more than fifty percent rental, rented. Uh. With, 
I have to be honest with you. I don't know how we would ever regulate that. I mean, it's no different than any other home. <clears throat> if the homeowners association is going to allow it, I mean, you know. Well, I think if we say it, we're at least setting the standard. Okay. And so you know initially, and then you'd assume that the homeowner association would monitor it. Okay. What? what? Why would we want to limit rentals? Well, we didn't want to have a situation where somebody builds all these and they live in one and they rent all the others out. Another little colony. Or they live in none. So we want to... Well, see, least. that's the question we had last week, or last month, was it, is that bad or good? Or is it... Oh, yeah, I guess we decided it's bad. And so we want... To yeah, but, but after... My last couple of council meetings, uh, I, I think council would not object if the whole place was rented. Even in RA hmm? or RC? Yeah. I mean, RA would be RA. Rare. I mean, we have rentals all over town. Yeah. You, know. you do. You do. That's true. And there's really no way you, you know, unless you knock on the door, you, know, you can't, you know, and. Then why don't we allow them in RA? No, I just, just said we, we, yeah. we got rentals so all the time. Dual family, it, not allowed. It, yeah. He's saying there's rentals all the time. I'm, I'm just well, we're just setting that down as a standard that we would like it to be a combination, either all ownership or no more than 50% rentals. You put me in a predicament. That's okay. We we're not going to throw oh, oh, this tonight. Anyway. No, we're not only, only <laughs> you can think about it. No, only from the, the stand <laughs> approving it to go to council. And then you have to defend it. You're going to have to defend yeah, it. Yeah, and, and that I can't defend. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, okay. We we uh, you know right right now I'm you know it's. But you're going to have a hard time advocating for it. Yes. I don't think you can, I mean, liberal-minded as one would want to be, I don't think that you can argue against the fact that if you intersperse units which are, are owned with rental units, that in general, a, a certain standard of maintenance tends to be maintained. There are rental areas that are beautifully maintained because conscientious individuals live there. There are areas which are not maintained You're right. at least. And, and we would all hope that they would be well maintained, but I think when you state that only 50% of those will be rentals, there's a communal pressure on those rental units to, yes, would you please do these things so that you may maintain in keeping with the rest of us. And none of us like to realize <coughs> that we do live in that kind of society, but we do. Yep. And it does create that pressure to raise your... Well, I think it's also, it's about... It's about how the development is actually built. I think that's the main thing, is if you're building just to rent it out and make money, then you're going to make design choices that, are, that, that have to do with the level of choice that renters in town have, which is almost none, right? So you're going to make design choices that are about density over quality of life. And um, and so, like, if if the, if the developer knows that there's going to be more of a, um, we're trying to make a neighborhood. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Well, also, like, the people who are going to invest in buying them are going to to want them to come up to a higher standard of. There's there's a high demand for housing in town, but. It's it's less um, yeah. There's you can be more choosy than renting. Yes, but if to an extent. <laughs> but if you if you look at the entertainment, the, 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 you know what areas are really available to this, you know, pocket uh, neighborhood and so forth. Uh, it's 
Well, also... See, see I, I'm... My, my, we... We're, we're make, to me, we're making, you know, when we say only so much can be, can be granted, we're, we're kind of putting the value of judgment on the people that we grant. I agree, and, I, and, if, and I, if we're and, talking and, about elderly people who want to be in a pocket neighborhood and maybe don't want to buy a home, but, you know, but, but, don't want the responsibility of but, buying but, a home. But, I mean, we're limiting it. I agree with you, but, Jerry. But we're, 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 we're trying to set the standard. And, and to me, you know, uh, it, it should be up to basically that developer, you know, because we're, 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 we're really concerned about uh, elderly, you know, Yellow Spain is getting older and older. And people want to downsize, okay? But they may not want to own. They now decide we're just going to rent. But if we say, well, only 50 percent of this place would be be renters, you're 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 you're, 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 you're to me we're limiting. Uh, well, let's think about it. Yeah, let's leave it the way it is and think about it. It does cut both ways because you don't want a developer to come in and just cookie cutter a bunch of substandard or um, and I think that's what really structures I'm not arguing for that by the way I yeah, really yeah. only agree to the 40 50 percent so that I can get the duplex <laughs> in um, she's horse trading house of cards <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah uh, this thing, you know I'm right now I, I, but I know we're not completely done with it. But, yeah. You know. Okay. Okay. So I'm for number to think about that. Okay. So for number six, we're going to leave it at this level B site plan review if it's required. Um, seven says that the pedestrian walkways can be will be included on the plans and are part of the common areas. So did you leave five as it is with your, we're going to bring that back for discussion? We're going to bring it back. But no, well, we were changing it to no more than 50% can be rentals. And then we're going to pressure Jerry this next month. And then we'll, we want it in that and we'll look, consider it over the next month. Mm -hmm. uh, and number seven, <clears throat> I, that they're part of the common areas and tracks, but I don't think that, should they be calculated into the 400 square feet of common open space per dwelling unit? I think they should be. I think they should. Sidewalk should. should yeah. <coughs> no. You don't think so? Uh, I'm thinking of like what about, like you know the big turnaround in front of the wellness center? Is mm -hmm. that open? What is it called? common open space no well i don't think that's a pathway but i think sidewalks and pathways should be or else you're making it unreasonable okay all right that sounds good okay all right but not the roads yeah we're not talking about the roads mm -hmm. i guess that turn around is a road i don't know it's not a road it is i see people drop people off and okay. use it yeah the wellness center Okay. Oh, yeah. I, I always stop. I refuse to drive one. Maybe you realize it now. No, I'm, <laughs> no, I'm, no, I'm, no, I'm, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure. I assume it was a turnaround. I say people drop people off. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that are having trouble it's getting out. That was the idea of the design of it, I'm pretty sure. I just don't like that. Most people don't use it, but I've seen people. that's where you park? No, I let people out all the time. Council park. Okay. Because it's not really. Other than going around there, you got to, you know, they got yeah, to stop. I mean, That's fine. Like you, but, you know, yeah. a tennis court would become an open area. Okay, so Denise has some other things, just some ideas and some things that came up in reviews. Is there anything here we want to include I like the lighting. I thought the other things probably weren't necessary. You like the no glare and or yeah. downward facing? Yeah, and even though there were, the lighting was addressed in another area, I thought it was nice to have it because I think it's just that there is that tendency now trying to have lights that are directed down, lower wattage, one so that you don't candle. have light pollution. What is a one-foot candle intensity? 
You can hardly see. <laughs> 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 it's like you can see a foot. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If you go through a lot of towns, you'll no notice that a lot of them, it's very low wattage. But what does that mean? What I think it's that you can see one foot out. Oh, okay, so it only lights up <laughs> one foot. It's like it's like a point in the darkness. Yes. It's not As opposed to a flood. Yeah. Well, if it's that hard to understand, it might be. Yeah, we I probably mean, need yeah. to change Yeah, we can just do number two and forget the lighting features. Shall be equipped with cutoff to direct light downwards. Um, um, we, I can add so to diminish glare and spillover. So take your yep. flashlight. Is is there like a maybe we could do like a wattage limit or something like that? Lumens, lumens. Actually, I think a candle is a lumen or a foot candle yes. is a lumen. Is one lumen? One. Mm -hmm. It might be. A, yeah. It's okay. So oh. only allowed one or two lumens. I love that word. There's some unit crossover there somewhere. In other words, we don't want to look like Midwest when it's lit up. Yeah. Is that what we're saying? Yeah. Can we just put that in? Well, it also <laughs> just wouldn't be appropriate <laughs> in good. other, in a residential area. You know. Is it limited in residential areas, though? I think it's part of the whole. Isn't can we limit it problem? more than it's we just, can limit? I, we know this one. Can um, we just use the the lighting <laughs> requirements for the? It's in the general. It's in the, the, the district in the general code. It says it's in. Yeah. It's like it's like okay. about the cutoff elements. And so the we don't have to add that. Twelve sixty F five. I don't think you need it. No. Well, we're fine. Add it. Then we're fine. We're fine. Just say the lighting will. Uh, uh, well, I think she says that in two, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah so, so you're just, just saying put number two? Just use number yeah, two? Yeah, lean number two All right, in there. Okay. All right. Good. Okay. Let's re re in fact, it. is there a general statement when you say that all other, you know, uh, oh, yeah. portions of the code, you know, not addressed specifically sure. should be? I'd like to go. We need to just do the rest of it next time. Can we do the rest of it next time? I'm going to put my heels together for 20 minutes. You want to leave? Yes. <laughs> Let's go. We've got one paragraph. We're going to talk about do we need fencing. I hope not. Fencing is probably like that at the homeowner association, okay. right? Okay. Right. And that's on the next page? No, it's on the bottom of the. On the bottom. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, we let, we let Annie up put a chain link fence all the way around all that crap that they had. <laughs> They were supposed, well, to, supposed, they were to, be supposed to be black. Be black, <laughs> and it's supposed to be screened in places. Right, and they didn't do it right. But we're going to get on the roll. Where is the homeowner session? I should not see it. Fencing. But where is the homeowner association? The, uh, that was very, number very top. It was four. Yeah. So we already skipped over. It. So we were okay with. <laughs> Yeah, you you must not have been part of that conversation. She dozed a little bit. No, I didn't doze. Yeah. <laughs> no, I thought we were all okay with it, so we just yeah. went to I five, we six, seven. Yeah. I think we just leave fencing alone. That's a, that's the homeowners yeah, association. Yeah, it's too. covered. All right. Fire access. That's again. That's part of the existing code. Right. Um. That, now this next to the bottom the architecturally unified and compatible do we want to say that as part of a general statement at the beginning mm. maybe even yeah yeah think so i think we need to i think that is nice to say so and how are you going to define that well you don't define it that way most well, we're but, saying well, can most we not, not can, how about we just don't because i Personally, I find that dwelling grouped dwelling units that are more varied are actually more um, conducive to fitting in with the other other houses around them than a than a planned everything looks the same together. Actually, that's more strikingly. What do you think? Well, see, I. 
would agree with you if we were looking at like that development on the way to you know the Fairfield Mall where everything is very cookie cutter. But if you put a ranch style home next to a two story farmhouse looking home next to it, I mean that kind of variety would look bizarre. No but one's going to do that though. It's not economic. <laughs> Like, but I mean, I think that's what this is saying is, is when they say architecturally unified, it's more in terms of the type of structure generally. I think, say, I think, to look this I think right. saying architecturally unified actually encourages them to all look the same because it's simpler for designers. Well, you don't want to have a plat, right? Where right. You your choice between A and B. Maybe you want to say as must be architecturally compatible. I don't even know what that means. I don't either. But. Yeah. <laughs> well, drive around tell us drive. And, and every house there is different. Yeah. Every, and and uh, those that were like, people have redone them, and you've got... I just think yeah. saying anything and like encourages to them right. to be too yeah. unified. Let's leave it alone. Let's okay. just leave it out. It's already in principle. Okay, are we done? <laughs> uh, <laughs> we've already said 400 square feet. We're, we're tired. ADA I requirements are regulated by I have two. Oh, you came to the council meeting? No, no, I don't, I know. I've been up since 5.30. Oh, no, no, I thought no, you no. said rep since. No, no, no. It's okay. only 8.30, guys. Okay. okay. So, so we have all these other things. Let's leave those alone. The text amendments. Yeah. And we'll look at them next time. Yes. Because we've just kind of rewritten the... the, the the code anyway. Yes. So that means you can update the um, this, and then yeah. that'll lead you to update the other stuff. We probably needed. won't change the other stuff very much. Do we still need to have a public hearing to make ourselves legal? Yes. Yes. Okay, so uh, this is a public hearing uh, for uh, Chapter 1262 changes or um, Rocket Neighborhood Development. Uh, anyone here want to say anything? Okay, I if not, then I'll close the public hearing. Sounds good. Um, we'll reconsider this next time we meet. Do I have a motion to adjourn? We agenda planning, agenda planning. Oh, oh God. <laughs> so I, I, said put, they I, were I do want to say I put out on the table the uh, unified and an overview of the sections <laughs> in the comprehensive land use votes. plan. I mean, I reviewed the 2010 plan. There's a lot of things we can update, a lot. Yes. A lot of things that have happened since 2010. Um, and so. That's your. There's, it's oh, no, here. that's mine. We'll, we'll, okay. I do want to make one more statement real quick, and that is that after we get through this PND, any other text amendments are being held until the fall. Oh, good. Okay. I'm just keeping a file of text amendments as cool. they come yeah, up. Yeah, that, that's good. And I'll just bring them all to you sometime in the fall. Okay. Okay, so that means that we may have time actually to look at the comprehensive plan next yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great. Yes, we have people coming for stuff. Okay. So agenda planning is uh, <laughs> a comprehensive land use plan. All business. Yeah. 1262, chapter 1262, public hearing? Yes. Yep. Yep. So we're adjourned? No, no. Yeah, no. yeah. So we had a motion. We had a motion. Now and then. Rose and, sure and I, Jerry. I make a motion. Okay, Rose motion, we adjourn, and Jerry seconded. Oh, maybe it was Adam and Rose. <laughs> I mean, Adam and Jerry. Adam. <laughs> Voices sound identical. <laughs> You mean um, you just all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks everyone so Thank much. You.